Hello and welcome to Clean Talk. I'm your host, Brad Whitchurch. It is Wednesday, December 7th at 3 p.m. Eastern Time, and that means we're coming to you live and very excited to have with us today our guest, Richard Prince. Richard is the Senior VP at Blue Ocean Robotics in their UVD Robotics Division here in the United States. Richard, welcome to Clean Talk. Thank you, Brad. It's a pleasure to be here. Well, it's a pleasure to have you on our show. You know that uh, if you've watched our show before, you know that we're big geeks for UV technology. So really excited to talk to you about the UVD robot product. But first off, uh, Richard, why don't you tell our guests a little bit about yourself and why you're on Clean Talk today? Absolutely. So I think it's a great program and happy to be able to talk about innovative ways to uh, focus on patient safety. Fantastic. Well, um, I know that you've been in the industry for a while prior to coming to Blue Ocean Robotics. What can you tell us about your background? Yeah, so I, I've been in a few different industries, but uh, I have a very strong healthcare background. In, in the past, I've worked with an instrumentation company, so I did full perioperative assessments and obviously the OR, but also sterile processing but really focused on uh, being able to really bring process improvement and uh, targeted education. So focusing on the Joint Commission standards, but in the past few years, I've been in infection prevention. I was with Evaclean Infection Prevention, focusing on a standardized approach using safer, more effective chemistries. But while there, I was able to really dig in to see and set protocols in uh, environmental services and work with directors of infection prevention. And if UV technology was being utilized, I would set protocols with UV. So I really did, uh, was able to dig in and determine the importance of the cleaning and disinfecting side and then the enhanced disinfection as well. So most recently I'm at Blue, Blue Ocean Robotics and uh, heading up the UVD robots division, which is uh, obviously focusing on UVC technology, but on the autonomous side. So we've got a great technology and an even better team focused on targeted education. Well, Richard, I know you're a recognized expert in infection prevention. We're very fortunate to have you on the show today. I find it interesting that you've gone from a company working on uh, chemical solutions uh, for infection prevention to a UV solution for infection prevention Tell us about that transition. Yes, it actually was a, a, a very uh, smooth transition, I think, because of uh, some of the knowledge I had overall with uh, infection prevention and really digging in uh, what kills certain pathogens and being able to utilize the best of both worlds and uh, was on a... Uh, um, in a hospital in the Southwest a few weeks ago, I was able to talk to the chief epidemiologist and about different ways to focus on certain pathogens and uh, knowing that very few chemicals out there kill biofilm, the ability to utilize uh, the UV technology to still deactivate or inactivate the pathogen through the biofilm uh, develops that safety net. So really uh, learning uh, from the chemistry side, but knowing that the technology side uh, has that safety net uh, is really a differentiator. So now I have to ask you about the biofilm because we know this is a big problem. Is there data that supports that uh, UV radiation can penetrate the biofilm or do you still need to have uh, the cleaning processes in place in order to break down that biofilm so that it, the surface can be disinfected? Can you explain how that works? Yeah, it's a great question. So uh, essentially, uh, UV has proven to be able to inactivate the pathogen through the biofilm, which is uh, so not going to kill the biofilm, but inactivate the pathogen, which is what we're looking to do. And uh, I'll give a, an example of that uh, becoming a reality or through through testing recently. But before I do that, uh, with EvaClean, we did have a product that actually had an EPA registration against biofilm, and very few chemistries out there have that claim. So essentially, uh, you'll be able to have, let's say, Candidorus, which is a very dangerous pathogen, and it's uh, very much uh, uh, around everywhere right now, not just in the U.S., and many hospitals it's proliferating uh, more recently, right? We're seeing more and more cases of Candida aurora uh, in the U.S. 
Exactly. And many hospitals are looking to have protocols being able to, to defend against this uh, dangerous pathogen. And uh, the thing about that is not only can live in biofilm, but it has been proven to create biofilm. So for instance, uh, just to kind of uh, piggyback off what we're saying about the UV technology, we actually had a hospital do a, a PCR test with a uh, patient who came into the hospital with Candida auris and actually during uh, discharge, so it was an isolation room, obviously. And I said that to make sure that we know that that was not their, their HAI. Um, however, we set the protocols uh, for them to utilize their terminal clean. They used the, the typical sporocytal that's most commonly used in hospitals for a terminal clean. 30 minutes later was our protocol to send in the the robot. And uh, actually from the PCR tests were done after the terminal clean, post-terminal clean, and then post uh, our UVD robot going in. Essentially, it was it was about 40 minutes later to um, based on the, the testing. So really, what the results of that were uh, one of the uh, uh, one of the swabs came back positive. It was actually that the bed rail after the sporocytal. And then actually that same spot came back negative after the UV. And so I've, I've spoken to a couple of my contacts in infection prevention, and they thought it could have been something regarding the, the protocols. And I said, well, it also could be uh, regarding the biofilm because of, and they all agreed that that most certainly could have been the, the reason because uh, bleach does not penetrate. Actually, two applications of bleach at 10,000 ppm were tested against biofilm and did not penetrate biofilm. But it could just as well be the cleaning protocol. And either way, having a later solution with UV has solved the problem. Let's take a step back, Richard. There's uh, a lot of UV products pro proliferating the market. What, tell us a little bit about Blue Ocean Robotics and how they got into this UV space. Sure. So Blue Ocean Robotics, quite simply, we make robots for humans. We uh, keep it simple. We really focus on improving the quality of life and productivity. Uh, our UVD robots are actually, we're the pioneers behind the self-navigating or autonomous solution. And UVC gained a lot of popularity in hospitals as it should over the last 10 years, but the far majority are stationary or static uh, solutions and really where you put one, uh, you, you put the solution, you put the uh, device right on one side of the uh, bed, and then uh, the EVS associate would wait outside the room for let's say 30 minutes, come back in, reposition it to the other side, same thing, then reposition it towards the bathroom. Well, we actually have a team of experts, our clinical application specialists who go in. They'll work with the EVS, Environmental Services Department, and Infection Prevention. They'll, they'll map out the rooms. So the robot lives in an, on a docking station in, a, in an area that works best. It'll go right to the room. It, uh, the one thing it doesn't have, it doesn't have arms. So it needs someone to open the door. And from there, and close the door, and it works, and, and it goes to different uh, different points. So it really has uh, repositioning. So we make sure that it hits the right targets, and then it really ends up mitigating some time, especially when we've seen that sixty over sixty percent of the hospitals in the U.S. are utilizing some UV technology, and the far majority. Is are those static solutions? So we, it's typically at least an hour to do that disinfection when you're able to do it in ten to twelve minutes with our our robot. And uh, you talked about um, the the autonomous nature of the UV robot, the UVD solution, and I, I want to get deeper into that. You know, a, a lot of people don't realize that UV isn't just a, a silver bullet, right? That um, and there are some inherent limitations with UV technology, such as shadowing, which requires you to reposition uh, the radiation source, as you mentioned, but with the UVD solution, that's done automatically once it's set up. Do I have that right? Yes, 100% have that right. So we go, we, we set that up and it goes, and really uh, the, the great thing is, is the data. We have a program, a fleet management program that's actually able to 
look to who's uh, controlling the uh, who's there with the robot that day, and being able to if if there is any interruptions by if there's a chair that was put in the room that post being mapped, it'll go around it, but it'll register that there is a miss right in that area. So any interruptions, we track that, and we have. A, a phenomenal program focused on process improvement, utilizing data, and then of course the training, uh, being able to, we mentioned before that that safety net uh, to be able to have an enhancement to their cleaning and disinfecting protocols. And it's an enhancement, right? UV is not a silver bullet. Uh, can you talk about the layered approach you recommend and where UV fits into the cleaning protocols within most facilities? Yes, absolutely. So really targeting terminal clean and uh, discharges. But if you look at a terminal clean, let's say the uh, in the operating room, you're going to do terminal clean. You're going to be uh, utilizing your, your terminal clean consistent with your standards. So the environmental services standards going in and doing a terminal clean, we then recommend the robot going in 30 minutes after. The reason for that, very few chemicals right now kill biofilm that we mentioned. There are a few, but biofilm, even with that, the chemical uh, kill claim, has the ability to grow back. So in that case, the uh, UV then helps to be able to mitigate that. So as long as you send it in 30 minutes later, no matter what is a protocol, that's the best way to ensure that you're really utilizing the enhancement and not necessarily that uh, silver bullet, but it really becomes that safety net of really a true protocol for infection prevention. And it addresses uh, the human element and the human yes. element comes into play. Hey, we are, we're all capable of missing a spot, right? But mm -hmm. uh, the UV radiation, if it's positioned in the right uh, angle, it's not going to miss a spot. And that's why the automation, the autonomous nature of your product, I think is so important. You, you talked about it a little bit, but can you explain to our audience exactly how the product is autonomous? Is it using lasers? Is it using acoustics? How do you upload a map of the room? How do you make yeah. that robot understand the floor plan that it's disinfecting? Absolutely. Great question. So we have a tablet that goes with the, the robot. So when you're first, our, our team goes in to map out the room, it's remote controlled and focusing on target points. So in certain areas, very small rooms, things like that, we can always do a combination of what we call hybrid, the uh, utilizing the remote control as well as the uh, self-navigating. But the majority of the time, it's going to be self-navigating. That's where we control it to the each target point to mitigate that amount of uh, uh, shadowing that you mentioned and really also mitigate the over or under exposure. If you have the static solution that's in three three points, it's going for quite a bit longer as opposed to reaching, let's say, 100 millidews to be able to really have that. We also utilize dosimeters for validation. So there's a lot we do to make sure that we're working with our partners to really have that peace of mind and safety net. And then, of course, the data and technology and support provided by the, the Blue Ocean team. So you place dosimeters in the room for the initial setup. Is that the idea? And then you can identify best locations, lock it in, and now you have a set process. Do I have that right? Yes, we do during the initial, but also during uh, for vet validation. So we've uh, we have our uh, our partners. We 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 go ahead and educate and say, okay, here's the most common areas. We've even started to make sure that we're utilizing dosimeters on the floors, as we know the importance of floor disinfection as well. Which I'm sorry, I'm smiling here, but we've had several of our previous guests have talked about gamifying infection prevention for better results and. All I can think about is uh, wanting to uh, compete with uh, setting up the robot, right? It's like a remote control toy. You get to decide yeah. where it's going all over the room. Uh, I think if, if you can get your customers to take two of them, we could have uh, infection prevention robot races. I just see an opportunity to have a lot of fun with that. Who knew infection prevention could be so much fun? Are you seeing that in the healthcare facilities? Do people like setting up the robot? It sounds like a lot of fun. Yes, they, they do. We found our, our team and the 
uh, who was doing a trial in the Southwest last week said, Oh yeah, there's, there was some fighting over good, good friendly competition fighting over who gets to, to control the robot and help with the, the mapping and really seeing how it, uh, how it works. I mean, it's a, it's truly a great technology, but really the technology is part of it. It's the overall partnership and where we're, we're really all in this together because our goal is to be able to help with process improvement and patient safety. So uh, you'd mentioned about utilizing dosimeters for setup and validation. Is this the main method? How do you determine what the right location is to be providing the right dosage of energy at the right distance? How do you do that? Yeah, so we, we've got a great team that actually is uh, extreme experts in that, but really focusing that on those high touch areas. I mentioned the bed rails, obviously. You want to make sure that those high touch areas are the, the first uh, for first target. So they go and make sure we get every map out every inch of the room. And then it becomes a little bit like an architectural map. So you'll see that once it's uh, once the mapping is done, it pops right up on the screen and it looks uh, very, yeah, it's very, very in, in depth, but it's it's really a, a differentiator in itself. It absolutely is. I hope our audience understands what a critical differentiator it is because UV radiation works very well. Um, it's, you know, CDC's come out with their guidelines on exactly what dosages you need for each pathogen. It's well validated, uh, the UVC technology. It has these limitations and it's subject to shadowing. Uh, it's subject to weaker energy through reflection. Unless you have a good system to address these challenges, you're not going to get the results you want. And I think the autonomous nature of your product is really the key differentiator and addresses some of the challenges with UV technology. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. I mean, you look at the stats in terms of being one meter away, getting full exposure, and we've got... Uh, the, the efficacy is there. We have, uh, I mean, are 1,440 watts. So there's a, a lot of energy there. And, but really, if you backed up and go two meters back and the amount of uh, efficacy drops down significantly and so on and so forth. That's why with some of the other solutions out there, it takes so much longer. But certain areas, like you mentioned, can lead to overexposure and discoloration, things quicker because of that overexposure and we have a, a solution that mitigates that i mean overall it's a process improvement initiative because it's able to get uh, really do do more with less in, in less time well you mentioned something else there you talked about discoloration and a broad spectrum uv uh uh generator can cause discoloration and material degradation but there's a sweet spot right and so by controlling the amount of time and energy uh you're saying that you can avoid some of those challenges is that right absolutely yeah so we're really reducing that risk for over or under exposure. And obviously the overexposure case would be much more in line with, with this. And now you mentioned that the, of course the robot is fully autonomous. And I think you said it lives most of its life on a docking station. Can you tell us how that works? So it's autonomous, it disinfects the room, you open up the door and what happens? It goes and, and takes care of itself? Yeah, it's gonna head right back to uh, to its next uh, yeah to its docking station to to charge up and get ready for the ready for the next job or next uh, next opportunity. So, and we that that's another thing that when we do the training, we actually are now training uh, the the team members who are going to be uh, usually the uh, uh, environmental services supervisors, and we are also doing training for the entire staff each shift because focusing on the safety aspect as well as knowing that when they're going up to the units, everyone from uh, patients to clinical staff to visitors are going to say, hey, what's that? So we want to make sure that everyone has that uh, confidence and saying, oh, this is a great, great program to enhance disinfection. Absolutely. And I, I want to dive into, you've mentioned time savings. I want to break that down a little bit more. But first, I, I want to get into some details because my, my head is spinning with the questions <laughs> around how this works. So if what is the battery, like how long will the robot stay charged 
the phone it has to uh, go charge itself on the docking station? Will it do one room? Will it do a wing? What's typical? Yeah, it's it's close. It depends on the wing, but it's close to to that. It's about uh, about ten rooms, so it's about two two hours for one robot. So, which is why many uh, facilities end up getting a few robots, and then we end up going in and really doing a site survey. And during mapping, we come up with a, a strategy that works best for for them. So it's really we know that no two facilities are the same. So that's why we're our team of experts go in there and. and help really uh, come up with process improvement initiatives. Uh, I still suspect that people are buying multiple robots so that they can run obstacle <laughs> course competitions, but we'll that, come that back to that. That could be the case. That could be the case. I'm not, I, I, there are some nights, but not, uh, not every night. So uh, yeah, you, you never know. <laughs> so yeah, well, who knows what goes on late night in the facility, right? Uh, but um, well, I think I think the technology is fantastic. Let's get back to the time savings issue because you know obviously if if you have an autonomous uh, solution, you don't have the time of the manual intervention. What other type of time savings uh, are you identifying? Yeah, so the, the I mean, there's a, a tremendous amount of time savings. Anytime you can do a safety net to be able to mitigate any risk, I mean, work with environmental services consistently, and uh, anything to be able to reduce anyone to have to investigate a healthcare associated infection, and then of course the uh, simplified uh, answer there is the fact, as I mentioned before, that sixty percent of hospitals are using UV the majority are that static solution. So if you will just do simple math, uh, each uh, a room, it would be about an hour using a static, the average static solution. Obviously, that's going to, uh, depending on one, could be a little less, a little bit more. And it, it's about 10 minutes to utilize our robot. So you're going to, uh, we, we did a um, a monkeypox clinic that it took uh, six hours for a um, using a static solution, and it ended up being uh, it ended up being less than thirty minutes with our solution. So the fraction of the time. Well, ten to thirty minutes may sound to some of our audience members like a long time, but I think if we put it in perspective, not just versus other UV or static UV solutions. But versus typical environmental cleaning, because of dwell time, yeah. when you talk about how UV stacks up from a time saving standpoint uh, versus chemicals and environmental services. Absolutely, and with my my background in on the chemical side, it, it definitely paints a, a really good picture. And uh, so one of the other technologies that have been used in the uh, in the past and still now is uh, fogging or and electrostatic sprayers, which are different, uh, definitely different. Um, and but several of the uh, the chemicals that have approval for EPA registration through the electrostatic sprayers have a amount of time uh, that are called the uh, uh, being able to clear the room. So it's uh, in many cases, it's 15 to 20 minutes. So our 10 minutes is definitely going to be um, impactful there to reduce that reentry time. So uh, co time savings and how do you justify the cost? of the device uh what where are the cost savings or uh, uh equities with cost on the uv solution yeah so we're doing a couple different studies here in terms of cost comparison versus other solutions uv wise but we're factoring in i mean there's a a lot labor which not only is a, a labor savings but also the challenges with labor right now is uh, uh every environmental service department alaska director how many how many people are you short right now i've heard everything from uh from 20 to 85 and uh really but being able to utilize those and the, the team and what i've seen i've met in the last two years, through two and a half years or so, met been in so many different hospitals throughout the country and actually a few different ones throughout the world. And it's such an important role 
the, and I, I can't say enough about uh, those in environmental services and how impactful it is to, to patient safety. But there is a savings there from a cost savings. And of course, if you translate it to healthcare associated infections, the amount of one infection with that costs a hospital. So there's a few different ways to look at it across the board. We really look at it, the fact that the majority of hospitals are using static solutions. And, and that's where there's an additional savings when you factor in time is money. And then we have a, a couple different calculators to, to roll that out, making sure that the team can do what they do best. And how do you validate the outcome? So you can use the dosimeter to make sure you're getting the dosage that's correct for the pathogens. You have it autonomous, so you can make sure it's being repositioned. How does the facility know if it's actually having an effect? Is there any kind of studies or validation uh, from the results? Yeah, so we're running a few studies uh, in Europe and here in the U.S. And, and back to that quick reference point of utilizing the PCR testing, it's it's a method that's been proven to work as long as it's done correctly, obviously. And um, someone brought up an example of if you uh, take a hose to put out a, a fire, well, there's a difference. You have to be able to have the, the right amount of exposure, as you mentioned. So you want to make sure that uh, proper distance is extremely important and then really making sure you have the, the right amount of time. So validation for us is really important. I'm on a advisory council and we, we've tested all the different ways of validation. So I'm very, very familiar with, with validation. Uh, with dosimeters, you can't use them outside, which is not a big deal because uh, you're not going to be utilizing the EVs technology outside. So there's different, uh, yeah, they're all different in their own way. PCR, obviously the time involved in getting the results, but very, very accurate. And that's why the example I brought up of the hospital that we were able to be that safety net. I mean, we, and especially because that was a real world scenario and we just feel, uh, uh, I guess, uh, relieved that we're able to, to help support the program because we want to make sure that, uh, uh, patient safety is top priority. Absolutely. And you'd mentioned some of the challenges in staffing and how in some ways this can be a partial solution for that. What are some of the other challenges as a solutions developer that you see? You know, our practitioners, our patients, they all have the challenges of cross-contamination infections, HAIs. But as a developer of solutions for infection prevention, what are the, some of the challenges that you face? Yeah, so I think in general, what we're looking at, and, and the, the great thing about uh, our company, we're very forward thinking, but we're also work very much hands on with our partners. So a lot of our new developments are from working with the field. So we're able to, to see that uh, they want to know different notifications of the health of a robot or if there were any interruptions and being able to track that and being able to have coaching opportunities because we're there to uh, tell if it's happening at a certain time of the day, it captures all of that. And uh, utilizing that data correctly to be able to advance uh, and really uh, – continue to have that forward thinking mentality. Well, Richard, I know you're an expert in infection prevention. If you could wave a magic wand to improve outcomes uh, in infection prevention, either through processes or technology, what do you see as the real opportunity uh, to improve outcomes for patients and practitioners? Yeah, it, it, it's being clear with the, the protocols and standards across the board. I mean, there's uh, no silver silver bullet, but it's what you do and how often you do it. And uh, I, you could definitely go in just by talking to, I love speaking with environmental services because I've gotten great questions about what do I say in this scenario? Or And you could tell that there's just, uh, that people truly care about doing what's what's right for the patients. And uh, really, from a, the, the way to 
to make sure that infection prevention is by being proactive, following everything. It's it's not one thing. It's a combination. While I've been the expert in uh, pathogen reduction through chemicals and UV, it's also if I go into an isolation room, I'm going to be fully PPE and uh, and obviously wash my hands for hand hygiene. Even though there's so many different aspects, but if you're brilliant at the basics, you're going to be able to prevent uh, some of these challenges. Have you seen any impact from the COVID pandemic on infection prevention practices or outcomes and how they've related to your business? Absolutely. And uh, of, of course, um, a, a few, uh, let's say about uh, two years ago at this time, being able to go into hospitals and seeing the uh, the amount of uh, isolation rooms were heavily uh, COVID related. Now there's there's still. I was just in a hospital last week, and they have COVID related rooms, but now a lot more in all these other pathogens and uh, the C diff rooms, MRSA. Uh, I mentioned Candida auris, uh, very much so, but really opened uh, eyes across the board, and uh, uh, you just see that the infection prevention experts throughout these hospitals have just been working tirelessly for the last few years, and uh, it, it's really appreciated, and you could tell in conversations I've had to where people really like our technology because of what it can do uh, for patient safety. And of course, we're doing our part, new solutions, new technology. What can we expect in the future from Blue Ocean Robotics? Yeah, so we will continue to provide process improvement, continue to be forward thinking. We're looking to evolve and it's a, a technology and, and data platform that's continuously growing. We've, uh, we're on our third model update and we're, uh, and I was in Denmark last week and we're doing so much on the quality control side. Every robot is, goes through an extensive uh, 50 point inspection plus all the credentialing for uh, TUV compliance and that's an additional 40 plus points. So uh, but then the platform is continuously growing. So we, you can expect us to keep coming up with with great ideas to, to help uh, the industry. Well, that's fantastic. Any predictions for the future of infection prevention? Yeah, I think um, it. it it's back to the, uh, I guess, e each day we're seeing new, uh, either new pathogens or those we'd never heard of before or those that uh, were around uh, years and years ago. So I think back to being proactive and, and really there's no one approach. It's being consistent across the board with with pathogen, with uh, pathogen reduction through being proactive protocols. And we will uh, win the battle, I'm confident. Well, uh, we're glad that you're fighting the battle with us. And Richard, if people want to find out more about Blue Ocean Robotics or the UVD robot solution, where should they go? Yeah, blueoceanrobotics.com. It's blue-ocean-robotics.com. And it'll pop up the UVD robots as well. So we're, we're right there. And uh, otherwise, you can find me on LinkedIn, Richard Prinz, and I'd be happy to help. It's probably the easiest way to... Uh, to get a hold of of us, and uh, I really, really appreciate the time and uh, appreciate the great questions, Brad. It's been a pleasure. Well, Richard, we appreciate you and appreciate you being on the show. You've been watching Clean Talk live. I'm your host, Brad Whitchurch, for my guest, Richard Prince, reminding you. Until next time, keep it clean.